ceremony of mba 24 medal award function is the most significant event in the academic calendar of our institute it marks the culmination of academic journey celebrating the achievements and uh, uh, and hard work of the students who have successfully completed their studies it is an occasion that symbolizes transition from student life into professional world and we are extremely honored and fortunate that both sri sandeep sanyal and lieutenant general rc uh, shrikant vsn they have accepted our invitations to place this occasion so we are very thankful to you sir I feel with a deep sense of humility as I speak on this momentous occasion as director of AIK. AIK, formerly known as National Institute of Management, Calcutta, was established on 28th of July 1997 by Army Welfare Education Society New Delhi. The institute was earlier located at Alipur. and subsequently shifted to this eco friendly campus on 27th of may 2021 the institute runs the icit approved two years full time mba degrees with a batch strength of 120 students per batch it is affiliated to maulana abul kalam prasad in the university of technology west since its inception the bedrock of our institute remains our committed faculty members who play a very pivotal role in shaping the academic environment fostering learning providing intellectual leadership and guidance for students to be future leaders of tomorrow we in aimk believe in crafting a learning experience for our students that goes beyond the conventional boundaries we emphasize on real world application industry relevance and a holistic approach for professional and personal growth of each and every student apart from our flagship program of mba Uh, the institute in the last academic year has conducted a number of workshops seminars uh, industrial visits and management development programs for executive executives including officers of indian coast uh, guard aink has organized a corporate summit last year in collaboration with national hrd network and celebrating international mother language day by organizing bhasha art our students have participated and excelled in various non academic events like quiz sports and business math pro challenges our faculty member professor asmita basu made us proud by securing best paper award in an international seminar last year we are on an exciting trajectory of growth and are committed to creating a conducive environment of academic excellence and overall development of students driven by the strong traditions and ethos of our great indian Finally, congratulations to all graduating students as you stand on the cusp of a new chapter of your life. Please do remember 
that your success will be measured by the impact that you will make on this world and the laughter that you will share with others who are less fortunate than us. You are the ones who will shape our country's future over the next 25 years and contribute in making our great nations a developed country. India needs more innovative minds of your caliber and brilliance who can make this world a better place to live. Finally, be the torch bearers of positive change, embodying the spirit of excellence, empathy, and empowerment that defines your alma mater, our Institute of Management Board. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I now have the privilege of introducing Mr. Sanyal, who will not only okay. okay. what the achievements say, but a personality who is compelling us to look at our past with a new lens. Mr. Sanyal, who is a member of Economic Advisory Council, the Prime Minister, is from Calcutta and has studied in St. Xavier School and St. James School. He then went to Sri Ram College of Commerce, New Delhi for his bachelor's degree in economics. As a Rhodes Scholar, he earned another bachelor's degree from, in philosophy, politics and economics from the University of Oxford in 1992. And he followed that uh, graduate, undergraduate degree with a master's in economics from the same university in 1994. He was awarded the Eisenhower Fellowship in 2007, which recognized his work in the field of urban dynamics. The World Economic Forum honored him as a young global leader in 2010. By 2015, he had already become a global strategist and a managing director at Deutsche Bank. His foray into literature earned him the International Indian Achievers Award in 2014. In 2017, he assumed the role of Principal Economic Advisor to the Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. Nadir. As a key architect of economic liberalization, he championed sunrise sectors like drone technology and geospatial technology, along with advocating the modernization of the banking sector. One of his significant contributions include preparing six editions of the Economic Survey of India. We all know that he has authored several popular books on Indian history, some of them being The Indian Renaissance, Land of the Seven Rivers, and The Ocean of Churn. These works showcase his ability to bridge academia and public understanding. His latest work, Revolutionaries, sheds light on lesser-known stories of India's struggle for independence. His interdisciplinary approach to work and writings on diverse issues underscores his importance in the current intellectual landscape of India. He has recently triggered a public debate in the country on the need for diversity of aspirations that our youth must have to lead a fulfilling life. Thank you very much, sir, for accepting our invitation. We are all eager to hear your inspiring words. But before that, I shall request our academic coordinator, Professor Malini Madhukta, to present the graduating students to Mr. Sanjeev Sanyal so that the degree may be conferred upon them. Thank you, sir, and Professor Malini. Thank you, Dr. Kumar. It's my proud privilege to present the 24 batch to our honored guests. May I now request the MBA 24 batch students to please rise from their seats. Sir, I have the honor to present before you the MBA 24 batch who have successfully completed the course under your university and from Army Institute of Management. May I now request the students to kindly come up onto the stage one by one. Arab Fosh. Sandeep Kumar Sharma. Uh, 
सर्जन अरुण पावर प्रगति सिंह सूरज कुमार बेरा सोनाली चौधरी अंजना शाह
Pompey Bhattacharya, on behalf of Pompey, our parent will receive the degree. Sachin Tiwari. Naveen Kumar. Swaraj Kumar. Thank <laughs> you. 
Principal of JMK, faculty, students, parents, and of course the graduating class. Uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to address you today. Now, I'm always at a loss of words when I come to events like this because supposed to say something uh, hopefully profound and inspirational, uh, which you will remember. And uh, I'm always a little reticent to do that. 
for a variety of reasons. But since I have the honor to do it, so let me give it a shot. So what is it that um, I can say that may be of some worth to uh, you? Especially since most of you already have started working and uh, have already embarked in the journey. So maybe what I will say will be of some use to you, not in the immediate future, but over a very long period of time. Because most of those of the graduating class today will probably live into your 80s. Your gen my generation will probably live in, at least into our 70s, but your generation will live into your 80s and very likely you will be healthy enough to work possibly well into your 70s, at least to the age of 70, which means that that's a 45-year career, no, no trivial thing. And many things will happen in that time. Technology will change, society will change, politics will change, the jobs and opportunities will change, aspirations will change, many, many, many things will change. 45 years is a very, very long period of time. So what can I say that hopefully will be of some use to you over such a long period of time? So I came up with a few thoughts about what I have learned in, uh, in my time. Um, and maybe you will find it of some use. It may not apply to every single one of you at every point in time, but I think it will hopefully be of some use as you go through time and maybe um, it will, at some points in, in, turning points in your life, provide you some sense of guidance. So here goes. I'm going to talk about three principles. The first of the principles is be willing to do the boring stuff. Now, this may seem like a rather strange uh, thing to want to tell somebody, particularly since from a distance, much of what I do may look rather glamorous. See, I've had a career in, and a very successful one in international finance. I've been a best selling writer. Uh, I have been the principal economic advisor to the finance minister, and now I'm an economic advisor to the prime minister. It may all look very glamorous, but in fact, most of what I do is entirely boring. So let me tell you what it is to be a best-selling author. Most of what it means is the willingness to write one lakh words based on research and lots of uh, especially if you're a non-fiction writer, it means you've already done a lot of research in order to write that one line words. In fact, not more than 40-50% of the things I find out is a part of my research actually finds its way into the, you know, into, the, into the book. And then at least a dozen, if not 20 times, editing that book. So in fact, in the course of that, I perhaps written another line words or edited out another line words. So, while it may look good to stand uh, with your book with some luminary and be launching it or to announce that maybe a you know, TV series is being done on the basis of the book, all of that looks glamorous. But in fact, 99% of what I'm doing is sitting with that computer editing that book over and over and over again. And this is true of even the most glamorous life you can imagine. I cannot think of anything more glamorous than being perhaps a sports star, right? About as glamorous as you can imagine. Now, what does Neeraj Chopra do? He spent maybe 10 seconds on the podium getting his Olympic gold medal, but in fact, he spends most of his life going a stick over and over and over again. So, the point I'm making is much of the willingness and much of success is actually the willingness to do the boring stuff, which is the reason that very often people will tell you, do the thing you love. I will add the caveat to this, but at least love the thing you do. It works both ways. You may not always end up doing the thing you love. Life may throw you uh, opportunities where you end up doing things that you may not like, but at least then learn to love it. It works either way. It doesn't matter. Every job can be interesting, but 
either which way, the willingness to do the boring stuff is a very important part of success of any kind. The second principle, which may seem a little contradictory at first, is the willingness to be flexible in the long run. Now, much of the advice you get through childhood is about focus and persistence. Now, that is indeed a useful thing, especially if you have to do the boring stuff, principle number one. But as I said, most of you will probably have careers of 45 odd years. Now, it is not humanly possible to remain in this country. Now, yes, there are a few of you who will find a career that you find interesting over that length of time. But I'm talking about 80% of you. Or maybe even 90% of you. Things will change. Your interest will change. Technology will make my folks the sector you started out in. And by the way, you know, uh, artificial intelligence will particularly affect the kinds of job many of you will want to do because, uh, you know, you are probably going to areas than, uh, uh, today which may not exist 10 years from now. And this is not something new. This has been true always. Even if you look backwards, this was true. Who knew 15 years ago that social media influencer was going to be a job. People would have laughed at you if you told them that that was actually a career option. And yet, there are some very wealthy people today who call themselves proudly social media influencers. And who knows what the jobs of 15, 20 years from now will be. So, this is why it is important to have flexibility. And in the long run, flexibility will triumph over single-minded persistence for most of you. I'm making this caveat because there are careers and there are people who will, you know, make a success of it through single-minded pursuit. But for a very large proportion of you, flexibility will beat single-minded uh, pursuit. Now, how does this compare with the point number one? I told you, be willing to be persistent, boring things. Because I think there has to be, and this is an army uh, inspired institute. So they will understand the difference between tactic and strategy. You have to have single-minded tactics, but strategic flexibility. Now, we have army men on the stage, they will understand what I mean. In the very long run, the ability to think, out, uh, think more widely, be flexible, to have multiple careers. I have myself had have multiple careers. As I said, I spent 22 years odd in financial markets. Along the way, I also had have created a career as a writer. And now I'm a policymaker. Who knows in 10 years time what I will do? Even I cannot predict that. And that doesn't mean that they don't have to have links. There are many things that you learn in one that are applicable in others. But because you live in this fluid world, and this will not going to get less fluid, I can assure you, in the course of your career as society and technology, etc., change. Do not think of this as a problem. This is actually an opportunity. Many of you can think flexibility, flexibly about your careers. We'll be able to do wonders. Of course, there is a other conversation to be had about how I think, at least, that the education system itself which needs to be completely rewired to deal with this world. This idea that you study till the age of 23, 24, and then work for the next 30 years is simply not viable anymore. Because the way things are set up now, if you went with this particular path, then those who are the decision makers in their 50s and 60s are likely to become the most outdated people in the system. This is not going to be viable, and therefore, many of you, I can assure you, will actually have to go through some sort of education, retraining, rethinking in the course of your career. But it's not a bad thing. If some of you had wanted to be, may or may discover through the next decade or two that you actually want to be a doctor, then it is perfectly okay to go back to medical school at age 45, come out in your early 50s, 
and still have a 20 year career as a doctor because that is how long all of you will live. So think of this as a principle number two. Now principle number three, which derives from the first two principles, particularly principle number two, is we have the courage to think out of the box. Now thinking out of the box <coughs> is very often misconstrued and confused with flexibility. It's actually a separate idea altogether because it requires you to combine ideas in new ways, to completely very often go against what everybody else around you says. And the likelihood is quite often you will get it horribly wrong. If you aren't getting it horribly wrong a few times, you aren't thinking out of the box enough. So failing is a part of thinking out of the box. Now, I'll give you an example. All of you have actually participated in. So I thought of what would be an out of the box experience that all of you would have gone through. And I thought maybe just last year, we all went through India being going to the G20 presidency, right? Now let me show you how India went through this entire cycle in a way that was completely different from any other G20 presidency that, that has happened so far. So just so that you know what G20 is, in case you are not aware, G20 is perhaps the world's premium platform uh, for the world's largest economies, the world's 20 largest economies, they also, they together account for over 80% of the world's GDP. They come together every year with a new country being the president. And the usual way in which it is done, and I used to chair one of the key tracks of G20 called the Framework Working Group for many years. And the way it is usually done is that there are two, three locations that are designated by the presidency country. So the country, whoever it is, it could be Italy, it could be Argentina, whatever, they will choose their, usually their capital city and one other tourist kind of place which has lots of hotels and maybe one more place if they at most two, three places. And they will designate certain hotels. The G20 meetings are held in a very rigid format because there are 20 countries that sit in a U-shaped, uh, horseshoe-shaped table with the presidency, the chairman of that particular committee or track sitting at the end, at the top. And that's how that meeting is held. It's a very rigid, formalized system. So the easiest way to do is to set this up in a particular hotel or one or two hotels. And then as the meetings happen, to do it in an industrial way. So I, one set of meetings happen, they leave, another set of meetings come into the same hotel, use the same facility because it's all set up in a particular way. And you do one, 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 one. And there are dozens upon dozens of meetings. There are meetings for health, there are meetings on finance, there are meetings on science, there are meetings for health, uh, on all kinds of subjects. So, you know, this is the most, in, in some would say in an industrial sense, the most sensible way of doing it because there is one group of people and the logistics is set up. However, we in India decided to do it in a completely different way. And I have to give full credit for this to the Honorable Prime Minister Modi. He decided to do this in some 55, 60 different locations. Every single state, including some of the most remote states in this country, states like Tripura, or UT like Lakshadi, hosted at least one. G20 meeting, which meant that there were more than 60, 70 locations. Each one of those locations had to kind of learn how to do this. Now, when I first heard that this was going to happen, I have to say, I thought that this wasn't a great idea. So I was one of the skeptics uh, because I had always seen it being done in a particular way. But Prime Minister decided that, look, this has to be not just, you know, Delhi, Bombay kind of an event. The whole country has to participate in this process, particularly since we were going to be the first full G20 after the COVID shutdown. Because there had been G20 presidencies in the previous um, uh, three years, which have been very badly disrupted uh, by the COVID 
uh, experience. So we did it in a completely different way, like a festival. And I have to say, it was a resounding success. So for example, I'll give you an example of a place where normally you simply wouldn't have international events, Agartala. Like no large international event has ever been held in Agartala to the best of my knowledge. There's a brand new airport, it's a rather nice airport in Agartala. But I wasn't aware that there were any decent hotels there. And yet, G20 events were held. People flew in from all over the world to hold these events. And because it is such a rare event, the Chief Minister of Tripura, the people of Tripura, really opened themselves up to this event. There are actually, not known to many people, there is a beautiful lake palace in, 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 uh, outside of Agartala, which was nicely painted up. There were events and so on. And what may have been compromised a little in terms of industrial efficiency that I was concerned about was more than made up with the warmth and the innovativeness of doing it in these locations. And of course, there was a certain thrill to doing it. Because for the first time, many of these smaller towns felt that they were part of not just a national endeavor, but an international endeavor. So it turned out to be a huge success. So India's um, G20 presidency was a real game changer in terms of our place in the world. Almost everybody that I talked to afterwards, I said I have, I have been interacting with for many, many years of part of G20. They said this was literally the best G20 uh, presidency that had ever happened and that you know, it was going to be a very tough act to follow on. And it happened because, as I said, Prime Minister, what he thought about this whole thing in a completely out of the box way, which <laughs> I had at least never imagined. And I can tell you, most of the officials who had been asked to do the G20 organization had initially thought was it's going to be utterly impossible, but it turned out to be a resounding success. And many of you were participants of the event in various ways. You may have gone to the Youth 20 or, or seen a lot of the festivities around you, the logos, the, the events, and so on. So. Now let me kind of close the loop. I've told you about willingness to do boring things, the willingness to be of strategic flexibility in the course of your very long lives, and thinking out of the box. At times, these three principles may be at conflict, but I hope that as you become older, you will realize that actually they are complementary principles. And there is no Many magic wand about how these three principles can be combined and deployed. That is an art form that you will have to learn. But the idea of kind of presenting this to you is I think that these are the three lessons that at least I have learned through the course of my life and I wish somebody when I was about 23 had told me about. Thank you very much, ladies Thank you, sir, for your enlightening words and the three magic principles uh, that sir has conveyed uh, is not only uh, applicable for our graduating students, but are also uh, enlightening us, all of us, towards a new future. Now I request uh, our honorable guest, Lieutenant General R.C. Srikan, Vishish Seva Medal, Chief of Staff Headquarters Eastern Command, present the special awards to our students. I also take this opportunity to introduce General Srikant to the audience. Lieutenant General R.C. Srikant, Vishish Seva Medal, is an alumnus of Officer Training Academy, Chennai, Defense Service Staff College, Wellington, Higher Command Course, Army Guard College, Mao, and the prestigious National Defense College, New Delhi. The general officer has an excellent professional career spanning 35 years of military service where he had tenant at various staff, instructional, and challenging command appointments. His staff appointments include military observer of UN mission, general staff officer of an operational mountain division, 
Colonel General Staff Army Air Defense at Army War College, Brigadier General Staff at Headquarter Army Training Command, Brigadier General Staff Air Defense at Army Headquarter, and Major Gen General Army Air Defense at one of the Army Command. He had instructional tenure at Army Air Defense College, Indian Military Academy, and as directing staff at Army War College. Lieutenant General Srikant had also commanded his parent unit at the Western Border and an operational brigade at the Northern Border. The General Officer is presently the Chief of Staff, Headquarters Eastern Command. Sir, I have the honor to present before you the recipients of the Chief of Staff Rolling Trophy of MBA 24 for best overall performance, the awards of excellence for first, second, and third positions in academics presented by Army Welfare Education Society. I would now request the award winners to come up to the stage and receive their awards. Trahid Lance Naik Albert Ritta, Param V. Chakra Gold Medal with award money of rupees 20,000 for the first position in academics goes to Pompey Bhattacharya on behalf of Pompey, her parent will receive the award. For the second position in academics, Shangit Paratrooper Sanjok Chetri Ashak Chakra Silver Medal with award money of rupees 15,000 goes to Meghashri Chatterjee. V Chakra Bronze Medal with award money rupees 10,000 for the third position in academics is being awarded to Sheetal Khan Sharma. The Chief of Army Staff Rolling Trophy is awarded. For the best overall performer of this batch, covering both academic and extracurricular performances. This year, this award goes to Sona. Thank you, sir. I would also take this opportunity to take the winners of the three incentive awards that are awarded for the best performance in the specialization areas of marketing, finance, and HR. This year, the Army Commander Incentive Award for the best performance of marketing goes to Meghashri Chatterjee. In finance, Noli Basu and in HR, Sona. I would now request our honorable guest, General Srikant, to address the audience. Shania, Chairman, Principal Director, AMK, 
proud students, parents, and their faculty. On behalf of Victoria Eastern Command and the Patron Muji, I bring greetings to each one of you for having graduated and proceeding successfully in your respective careers. Of course, you have heard certain very, very enchanting advice from our guest of honor. And I am certain that in the years to come, you would keep them very close to your heart. And as he mentioned, that the environment is going to get more fluid and uncertain as we go forward. You should be prepared to make choices and adjustments as you grow in your career. AM, AMK as an institution has grown its, by strength and miles. And as an institution of eminence, is now contributing mightily to the intellectual capital of the country. And in the sense that the people who are graduating from the institution bring the mark of the olive greens into the corporate world. And for that, we are very proud to be associated with this institution. And my compliments to the principal, the director, the chairman, and the entire faculty for grooming and bringing out these children wherever they are today by their relentless hard work. As I was talking to the principal of the college, I realized that the placement is one parameter on which you judge an institution. And over a period of time, I understand that AIMK has geared itself to the industry and almost all the graduates who pass out of the port of the institution do find a very lucrative and fulfilling outing in the industry world. That speaks volumes for the quality of faculty and the amount of effort it is displacing on the, on the students. Mr. Sanyao and I would like to reinforce his new point that agility and career cannot go together hand in hand. We need to be very flexible. And he mentioned very correctly that strategy and tactics are totally different uh, brain diagrams. And if you were to overlap them together, you will get entangled in an arena of confusion. Therefore, most of you, as you have been taught in the various forums of AIMK, should learn to seek opportunities and challenges as you go forward. And not to shirk away from responsibilities which will, which will come your way. Responsibilities also tell a thing about your character, that what you like to do and be held responsible for and how try to translate your capability into action. So I would urge you all to take responsibility and ownership wherever you are in whatever profession you continue to profess. The parents were there. We thank you for trusting AIMK with your awards. And we are so happy that so many of them have found the job of their life and will continue to grow the confidence that this institution has endowed. Your confidence in the institution also rubs off on the larger fraternity of armed forces. Of course, the larger population of students here come from a background of olive, the Air Force, and the Navy. The smaller population does come from civilian background. So the success of these students here gives confidence to the parents that this is the institution to trust and keep their children in, and therefore will succeed in life. And the, student, the institution drives that confidence from you, then you further and further. As a management committee head, the patron chief and self and the chairman look forward to adding value to the institution in whichever way we can. We open suggestions and we have a very, very vibrant dialogue with the faculty here how to energize and enhance the quality of this institution to the next level. As to pass out or already have passed out and going into your jobs, we also are an ambassador of the institution, the outside world. 
and also an icon of replication for the students who are still in school. So while you conduct yourself outside in various industry, you are carrying the flag of Indian Army. And to the children who are still conducting the education, you are being inspired for. Therefore, your success rubs on on the quality of the effort that still the children put in for the system. I would once again urge the students and everyone to focus their efforts to always keep the alma mater in your, in your mind, come back to it to nourish it, and come back to it to also see how it goes further in life. To conclude, my compliments to the principal, the chairman, the director, the entire faculty, and the support staff. Who have worked relentlessly to make sure that the institution goes to this stage. Thank you very much. My compliments to the graduate students. All the best. Jai Hind. Thank you, sir, for your enlightening words. I would now request our principal, Dr. Anushek Kumar, to lead the graduating students for taking their management oath. I request all, grad all the graduating students to stand at their respective places and prepare for the oath taking. You may take the text of the oath out of your file, which is placed in the file with the text titled Management Oath. Yeah, so please repeat after me. As a business leader, I recognize my role in society. My purpose is to lead people and manage resources, create value that no single individual can create alone. My decisions affect the well being of individuals. Inside and outside enterprise, today and tomorrow. Therefore, I promise that I will manage my enterprise with loyalty and care and will not advance my personal interests at the expense of my enterprise or society. I will understand and uphold in letter and spirit the laws and contracts governing my conduct and that of my enterprise. I will refrain from corruption, unfair competition or business practices harmful to society. I will protect the human rights and dignity of all people affected by my enterprise. And I will oppose discrimination and exploitation. I will protect the human rights and dignity of all people affected by my enterprise. Sorry. I will protect the right of future generations to advance their standard of living and enjoy a healthy planet. I will report the performance and risks of my enterprise accurately and honestly. I will invest in developing myself and others, helping the management profession, continue to advance and create sustainable and inclusive prosperity. In exercising my professional duties, according to these principles, I recognize that my behavior must set an example of integrity, eliciting trust and esteem from those I serve, 
I will remain accountable to my peers and to society for my actions and for upholding these standards. And this oath I make freely and upon my honor. Thank you. You may sit down. Thank you very much. Um, I must uh, mention, as uh, Mr. Sanjeev Sanyal was talking about the G20 summit, we at AIMK were no exception and we were marveling at the way the G20 summit was held and uh, we thought that we must also respond to this event by creating a, a value proposition uh, of our own. So what we did was, uh, we, we decided to do something unique and publish a book that articulated India's position as a voice of the emerging global south. We partnered, partnered with Sampar Publishers to publish a book titled G20, India's Presidency and the Emerging Global South. written by our faculty members. Its editorial is written by Dr. Sunandan Roy Chaudhary, the editor and the owner of Sampar uh, Publishers. And it has a foreword by Mr. Harsh Vardhan Shingla, the chief G20 coordinator and former foreign secretary. We shall on this August occasion take the opportunity to launch this book. I request all dignitaries on stage to unwrap the book placed in front of them and present it to the audience and members of the press for the photo of the Big round of applause. Editor, yeah, unfortunately, the editor could not come because of the death in his family, but his team members are here. Would the team members like to stand up and identify themselves? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I shall now invite our director, Brigadier Dr. Sujar Ajahn Chaudhary, to felicitate our distinguished Mr. Sanjeev Salyan. Chief of Staff, Mr. Kumar, Lieutenant General R.C. Shilpan, Vishesh Seva Mr. General U.S. N. Gupta, NGM, and Chairman, R.B. Institute of Management. Thank you, sir. I now request our guest of honor, Chief of Staff, Mr. Command, General R.C. Shita, Mr. Seva Medal, to declare the Medal Award function closed. I declare the 21st Medal Award function closed. Thank you, sir. All are requested to apply for the National Anthem. Anthem remains standing till the academic procession leaves the office. I'm going to go to the next 